Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayers. If you'd like to follow with the service sheet, uh, then you'll find these at dedhamandardleyparishes.org.uk. On the home page, look for service resources and in the list, find Morning Prayers from the Northumbria community. So, let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen, Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen, Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen, Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen, Christ, have mercy. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. So this morning we're looking at Acts chapter 16, verses 6 to 7. Acts chapter 16, verses 6 to 7 headed up Paul's vision of the man of Macedonia. Paul and his companions travelled throughout the region of Pyphiria. Phygia Phygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mycenae, they tried to enter Bithynia. Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mycenae and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So, only a few verses, but there's a lot in here to learn about how the Holy Spirit can guide us and lead us and stop us and start us. And it's really interesting to have a look at this. So Paul and his companions were kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. But when they came to the border of Mycenae, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. Now, we're not told what that experience is. It might have been a prophetic word. It might have been a gentle whispering to individuals who, when they shared their feelings together, found that they were in agreement. But they were obviously, it was obviously a clear enough message to them in their spirit. And so they went, they passed by Mycenae and went down to Troas. And it was here in Troas where they had this, where Paul had this vision of a man in Macedonia begging him to come over and help them. Now, Troas is really interesting because if you've been reading Acts up to this point, you will notice that Luke talks about they and them. But after Troas, it becomes much more personal. In verse 10, he says, after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave and concluded that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. 
So it seems that it was at Troas that Luke joined Paul's company and from here on he includes himself in the reporting. Macedonia was the chief city of Philippi and it was actually inhabited mostly by Romans and they were really considered the worst of the Gentiles and therefore much in need of the gospel. It's, it's really interesting in this passage to just remember that our ministry, whatever we're involved in, needs to be in cooperation with the guidance from the Holy Spirit. We should be having a walking, talking relationship with him. We're encouraged to pray without ceasing, which is carrying on this conversation with God all day about what you're doing, where you're going, where he'd like you to go, what he'd like you to do. And when I was first challenged about this many years ago, I remember it was a day when I, w I knew I was going to be in the car nearly all day running around doing various jobs. And I can remember getting to a T-junction in the road and I had a choice of turning right and going up to do see one person and deal with one thing or to turn left and go off and deal with something else. And I thought about this kind of teaching and I thought all right let me just stop at this t-junction luckily there wasn't anybody behind me but I very quickly in my spirit said to the Holy Spirit well which way shall I go do you want me to go left or right and I looked up the hill and I said you know do you want me to go right and I can honestly say I just didn't feel any peace about going right at all but when I thought about going left there was definitely a change and I thought yes it's right I go left so I went left and I got on with the day, had some lunch and then I did, landed up at the hill later in the afternoon. And when I stopped there, I said, oh, I was thinking about coming to see you this morning. And they said, well, it's just as well you didn't because we weren't here this morning. And I went home really rejoicing. I thought, oh goodness, I've learnt something today that my heart can actually witness and be led by the Holy Spirit. So I find this passage a reminder of that and a great encouragement to ask the Lord to help us to be more sensitivity, uh, to be more sensitive to his guidance in our lives. So shall we pray for that today? Father, we thank you that every single sentence in your word has something to say about you and about our life in you. And having looked at this passage this morning, I just want to ask you to help us, Holy Spirit, to be in more commune with you, to really ask you to help us to be sensitive to your presence as we go about our daily lives and to trust you for guidance, to look to you for guidance, and to ask you to help us hear you more clearly and follow you more nearly day by day. We ask that you help us, just as the disciples said that they would witnesses of everything that they had seen you do in your life, we want to be witnesses to everything that you have done and are doing in our lives, Lord. And we ask that you help us to be alert to the opportunities that you may open up for us day by day to share our story with others, to share the good news with people. And Lord, we are like sieves and so I love the fact that being filled with the Holy Spirit is in that continuous present, that you will continually fill us with your presence. You will continually fill us with your love and compassion and wisdom and guidance. And Lord, where we're leaky, when we're not paying attention, I just pray that you would prompt us, Lord, give us that little knock to draw attention to the intimacy that you want to have with us so that you can work in us and work through us out to the 
needy world that we live in. So help us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. And the canticle that we're going to say together now is another reminder of the fact that the Holy Spirit is with us continuously. Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek yet all powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks into me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek yet all powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me on my left and my right. And we finish our time together with a blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with us wherever he may send us. May he guide us through the wilderness, protect us through the storm, and may he bring us home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown us. May he bring us home rejoicing once again into our doors. So a lot to think about as we set out today, and I hope that you will just be able to talk to the Holy Spirit and have an, a real experience of him today. May God bless you and keep you. And perhaps you'd like to join us this evening at five o'clock when we're going to be looking at Psalm 111 together. So have a good day. <laughs>